This episode of Jaded Apple is brought to you by Sully Hosting. With web hosting plans starting at $1.99 a month, check them out at sullyhosting.com. Hey guys, Snow with Jade to Gapple here. Today I'm going to answer my first viewer question, and today's question is asked by Jazz Tech Life. He asks, Hey, I'm looking to buy a new MacBook Air 11 inch, but I can't decide whether or not it's worth doing a custom configuration, bumping up the SSD to 256GB, also getting the i7 and 8GB of RAM. Would you recommend spending the extra money on those extras? Even though the MacBook Air isn't my main Mac that I use, by the way, I have the MacBook Pro 2012 13 inch. 2.8 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 750 gigabyte hard drive. So this is a great question that people ask themselves before going ahead and purchasing their MacBook. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the 11 inch and the 13 inch and its configurations as well as performance differences. So as you know, the MacBook Air is available in two configurations per size. The 11 inch model is available in the 64 gig configuration starting at $999 and the 128 gig configuration starting at $1100. The 13 inch on the other hand is available at 128 gig starting at $1200 and the 256 gig starting at $1500. So with the 11 inch, the just to start out, the RAM is not upgradable. It's soldered to the motherboard and there really is no way to upgrade the RAM. So if you are going to go ahead and think you need the RAM later on, you do need to get it when you're getting your MacBook because there is no turning back. Um, the RAM does cost $100 to switch from 4 to 8 gigs and this is a, based on personal preference depending on what you want to do with this. If you want to do word processing, web surfing, 4 gigs or even 2 gigs of RAM on the older models. Um, but every means is enough. But if you want to do stuff like um, Final Cut, movie editing, After Effects, maybe small After Effects, um, I definitely recommend No Brainer to go for the 8 gigs of RAM. I have a 2 gig of RAM 2010 MacBook Air and Photoshop works just fine. Final Cut is very slow. I just want to put that out. So if you're going to do any movie editing in terms of the export times, if you want to do any encoding with Handbrake for example, I definitely recommend going with an 8 gigs of RAM. The SSD. Um, the 128 gigs upgrading to 256 gig costs $300. The SSD is probably one of the only things that is upgradable inside the MacBook Air. So again, it's based on how much storage you think you can use. I don't know how much storage you guys would be using or each individual user will be using. So it is really up to you. However, it is upgradable, but it is a little bit of a hassle. I did it to mine, but you do have to have a certain knowledge or have had some experience with learning how to migrate information, um, installing the drive. But if you think you're going to need 256 gig and don't know how to install it, I definitely recommend doing that because if you go ahead and purchase your own drive on eBay, it costs 250 plus if you got somebody else to install it for you, that, that would add up. So I think 300 isn't a bad price to upgrade to 256 gig. In terms of the processor, there's the i5 and the i7 option. The i5 by no means is slow. It's pretty fast actually. Um, I've seen it using Final Cut and some gaming and it's been doing just fine. But I don't see many people going for the i7. The i7 has some jump, um, increase in performance. I will mention that later, um, the specs from the benchmarks. But I think the i5 is fine for the regular consumer. But if you think you will need a little bit more processing power, then the i5 or the i7 is $150. It is quite pricey, but it's another thing that you can't upgrade yourself. So in total, after all these um, configurations, it would cost you $1,649 for the very top maxed out MacBook Air 11 inch, which is much more than the original price of. $1,100. So this is based on whether you think you're going to need all those extra processing power or not, the hard drive space, and the RAM. In terms of performance, the MacBook Air 11 inch with the all these specs, the 256 gig hard drive, 8 gigs of RAM, and the i7 processor, it had a total performance of 21% increase compared to the um, stock top end model, and the processor speeds were about 12 to 18% greater in benchmarks. So it's up to the user itself to decide whether they want to spend the extra $500 for 12 to 18 percent greater processor performance which in some means is pretty significant but in the end like I said it's up to the user now moving to the 13 inch the RAM also cost $100 and the hard drive from 256 to 512 cost $500 and the processor is $100 to upgrade from i5 to i7 and the total price will bring you to $2,199.
The processor speeds were 13 to 14 percent greater on the 13 inch, so there isn't as big of a jump, and the overall performance was also 21 percent. So if you ask me, an extra $700, I know the 500 gigs of SSD is insane, but knowing that it's the same base price as the Retina MacBook Pro, I'd probably definitely go for the MacBook Pro. It's a no-brainer, because considering the price range and the thickness, um, you don't really sacrifice that much. And performance-wise, the 13-inch Air versus the Retina was 39% faster overall. If you're getting the 11-inch, it's really up to you whether you want to upgrade the specs or not. But in terms of the 13-inch, if you've had enough money to stack up your 13 inch i think you might as well just go ahead and get the 15 inch retina so that's pretty much it for this video guys thanks for watching please subscribe i'll see you in my next one and please leave your questions below um for the question you want answered in the next video